Hi, this is Shane with The Rational Trader. It is a very warm day here in California. It's a little bit earlier video in the day than usual today. It's a weird schedule here. Um, let's look at yen. So we had some more foolishness here on my part because I ran, if you watched yesterday's video, we were talking about, um, you know, I didn't have the uh, auto trading turned on from at the beginning of the week when I installed the new... Uh, models and, and, and codes um, and that's because I have it automatically uh, off as by default and that's the correct practice you don't you want you don't you never want it to just start trading on launch right um, so uh, though it's curious that that's really the first time in over a year of doing this that that's happened in any case one of the things that I learned again is that uh, when you switch from simulated back to live, you have to. There's a couple, an extra adjustment that needs to be made for some reason, only sometimes. So what had happened is I, I ran in sim for uh, not sim. I ran a replay for Monday and Tuesday to see what I had missed, and we reviewed that last night. But then when I switched it all back to live, you, know, you do that here. You know, you turn off trade simulation mode. Um, you know, there's one adjustment that has to be made in the in the studies. So in the spreadsheet study, you have to tell it, um, hey, I do want you to send orders to the trade service as opposed to no. Okay, so this means send 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 a, send an order to your broker is what that means. Um, but then also in the actual Sierra chart trade window, sometimes open trade window for chart. Sometimes here on the main tab, this will have this will have flipped to sim, and it won't change back by itself when you when you turn off the trade simulation mode. And so that's what happened today. Um, last night, I set everything back to live and made you know changed all my my studies to point to or to you know correctly send to the trade service. But some of these some of these markets were still in sim three of them were these three so the 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 euro gold and the yen were all still sim for some reason um you know oil was correct i don't i don't know i don't understand the logic between why it does it sometimes and other times it doesn't it never used to do that um in any case um what that meant was that i was i was auto trading but then the order gets uh, rejected because it's a simulated order, but you're sending a lot. You're sending an order to the live trade service, so the impact on that was actually fairly severe today because I didn't notice it until then. So that short would have been really nice, all right. But I didn't get that short because of that that my my foolishness, right? Not 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 setting the. Uh, I'm gonna check it now because I'm. I'm thinking about it. Not setting this back from sim to live. Uh, um, that's an argument for having separate systems for test and, test and production. Um, so I missed that nice short right there. I, en I end up taking a short or a long here instead, um, which I would not have taken had I been short. Um, so I ended up taking seven tick loss there. There was an earlier loss I would have taken as well. So right here. 538 there's a long there so I would have been minus seven ticks and then um, whoops catching this nice short for a nice gain um, and then uh, as it is I'm down seven ticks in that market so $44 uh, the yen also had a very nice short that I, I just didn't get filled here by the by then I had noticed I had noticed the problem that we were just talking about uh, my order gets placed right there, I did not get filled. A nice signal. You have to really like that signal. Um, so I missed that move. So zero there in the yen. The problem here is that the market will often re retest that level. So that's why the, the order is placed there with the stop above that level. Um, going in with the market is, I, I haven't tested it in recently, but it's almost always in the past, almost always in the past. It's not yielded as good a result because the market will often thrash here um, after your entry. So you need you you need to have that stop up here. 
Um, so unfortunately that means on a move in this case I don't get filled and I miss this nice move. So two couple two moves there. You know, one in the euro, one here that I missed. In oil in oil there was another no fill, but this was a much different case here. The market's opening here. So here's the market open. Um, and it's, this is fairly ugly action here, a sideways thrashing like this. Very tough to trade that. Um, and then it breaks lower right into the point of control. So this is danger zone right here. And then it's going to start to thrash again. I do get a long signal here. Um, it's the same problem. I don't get I get touched twice. Actually, I get touched once. I get touched on this bar. And then on the next bar, I cancel. So um, not filled. It would have scratched, but... Um, no fill there, zero ticks in oil, and then it continues to thrash the rest of the the rest of the day here. So um, staying out of trouble nicely. The really the, the nice move was was this one here. You had to catch, and somehow you had to figure out that this is different than this, which is different than this. Um, okay, and then let's see what did we cover? Gold. What happened in gold? Gold had a nice up move here that I'm not trading that code. The, you can see the code right there. I'm not trading that code, so I end up missing that. That's a nice move. Um, it opens here, so the same the same thing. It opens with this this ugly chop here, uh, which is tough to trade, and you often find yourself taking quite a few losses as um, this happens. So I like the fact that we're you know that's we don't see that signal there that I'm, that I'm not trading so I missed that and then uh, there's actually another small move to here again I, I got some signals here I'm, I'm not trading those either um, again our where's the spreadsheet our um, we're set for hang on let me bring it up. we are set for huh hold on there it is um, in gold we're set at 1.03 trades per day on average okay so um, again we're, you know, we're, we're working to minimize trades and still get still give ourselves the opportunity to catch the move um, so what I you know I, I kind of like what I'm seeing um, I, I had you know I, I would be I would be profitable if I wasn't if I wasn't an idiot, an idiot about changing over from um, sim to live because that's you know that's the nice move right here that we're trying to catch that's exactly what i'm after and i didn't take you know five trades to get it so i like that um same thing in the yen if you look at the yen i missed you know i missed this move and that's unfortunate but that is exactly the signal i want that's the move i want uh, and i didn't take a lot of trades to to, to find it um so i'm not burning cost Look, looking for the move. All right, um, so we'll see here. We're um, we're one week into the the increase in trades per day. So just to recap, what we had done is oh I see that's why it was locked for reading. Um, what we had done is we were we had uh, music says uh, bonus points if you can name the show that this is a theme from. Um, we started uh, two weeks, you know, two two weeks and two days ago, uh, targeting uh, a, a, a very conservative three quarters of a trade per day in oil, um, and then in the yen, you know, 0.9. Six E was okay at 0 0.87 because you have to add 0 0.61 to it since we trade both sessions, so that's like 1.4, 1.5. And gold, I was concerned because I was, you know, I, I was targeting more than 0.75. Um, and then what we saw was basically no, no trades in CL and, and 6J. And then uh, GC and 6E looked okay. So then coming at the beginning of this week, I, uh, I increased it. So I did some more analysis, added some more codes to increase the average trades per day. Uh, or, or trying, you know, with the intent of increasing the average trades per day. All right, so I did that for CL and then also for 6J. 6J, I went all the way over to here, which is 1.16 trades per day. You know, still a small number, right? Um, and so now we need we now we have to have time go by to see what, uh, how it works out. Um, let's see. Let me bring up the 
as long as we're talking about it. Hang on. So as a reminder, this is what we're doing here when I say you know increase trades per day. I I take a model, and I build and I and I build it. I train it on data up through you know t minus six months. All right, and then um, I analyze that to find common behaviors. Now this the model is being trained a little bit differently now. It's being trained. Uh, to be a little more choosy, all right? So basically what that means is, is that when we look, when the, when the machine looks at the, at the market, it requires a bigger move to consider that a signal. That's how, that's how we, we turn that dial, all right? So maybe, uh, you know, to the machine, we, we, you know, some, something this big is not considered a signal, but something this big is, kind of like that. That's a way I can, I can, um, Adjust how sensitive the machine is to the you know, the the, the, very, the price variations in the market. You know, again, we, we're trying to separate signal from noise, so uh, we're we're being choosier in the model itself. So this part here has been, has changed uh, in that. Whoops, let's, let's do this one. Uh, maybe not. That that part itself has changed so that it um, it's uh, stricter. Okay, and then what we do is when we do this analysis here, this analysis of uh, frequent the frequency that we see of high quality trades in you know um, in buckets of X number of weeks. Um, so aggregated, not just one trade. You got You have to get a. You have to get a bunch of trades and 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 put them together to see if um, you've got something statistically valid. Uh, and so when we do that analysis, we're also going, okay, I wanna I wanna target fewer trades uh, per week or per day, as opposed to getting more aggressive and targeting uh, more trades per day. All right, and so. Um, that's what I mean when I'm talking here about trades per day. We were doing what you what you see say here in, in single market. We were looking solely at well, what is the risk factor, and we wanted that risk factor below a certain number. And so um, I, I am I'm doing this multi market. Be conservative. Be choosy. Be picky. Only only get the best. Um, specifically because we want to um, reduce the number of trades. Um, while still having the opportunity for that nice move. So what was happening is we were just seeing too many trades. We'd get, we'd get, the, we'd get that nice move, um, kind of not quite as often as we'd like, but then we were burning, you know, burning cash on commissions, um, finding it across, um, you know, if you, if, you look at it, if you look at it across the span of two or three weeks. Um, so now, you know, in terms of the number of trades being taken, I really like that. Um, and so it, it becomes a question now of okay, well, are, is it is it affording us enough opportunity or not? And we, we we just don't know that until we now we now test this in live conditions. And this is the hard part because if you're if you're a member that's that's uh, doing this along with me, you can it, it uh, requires you to be patient, and um, that can be that can be difficult to do, particularly if you see the market moving nicely. It's very easy for us humans to ignore the fact that we didn't lose any money in this ugly, hideous chop and instead focus on the one move the market made that day that you missed. And then you go try and catch that and you end up getting eaten alive in, in, in the chop. Okay. All right, so that's it for today. Uh, I will see you next time.